Hi everybody, welcome to the SME Business Academy, uh, the interview section. So my name is John Covey, I'm a multi-award winning business coach, sales trainer and mentor. And right here, right now, we're sat here with the networking extraordinaire, Stefan Thomas. Hi John. How are you doing? I've never, I've never been that, that much, I like that, extraordinaire, I like that. Extraordinaire, <laughs> yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to key that one in. <laughs> So, so obviously the SME Business Academy is all about providing uh, practical information, business advice for, for small businesses. Um, so before we start, obviously, before we get into this, if anyone wants to subscribe, there should be a little button floating somewhere up here where you can, you can hit subscribe. Uh, and other than that, we'll head straight into to, to, to Stefan. So tell us about you. Um, so, hi, I'm Stefan. Um, I'm the author of an Amazon bestseller called Business Networking for Dummies, um, which has sold pretty well around the world. Um, my next book, Instant Networking, is out on May the 23rd, um, also published by Wiley, and uh, I, I help people make more sales from networking. That's what I get to do for a job. I drive around the UK um, and talk to people about networking, and as a result, they sell more. That's, um, that's what I do. That's what I do. Fantastic. That's wonderful. And I mean, networking is such a big thing. Isn't it? And I think there's a lot of people still, they still don't understand or, or grasp the power that networking has. I mean, what's, what's your take on, on introducing someone to networking firstly? I, I was speaking um, two weeks ago to a bunch of university students and I was helping them grasp the concept that all these connections that they can make now could have such a big influence on their career in future. And it's the same if, if you run a small business. Most most of my clients, most of the people I work with run small businesses. In in order to sell something, you, you have to start a conversation somewhere. And to me, networking just um, offers that huge opportunity to start conversations at scale. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I've been doing for 10 years. Um, 10 years, over a thousand networking events. Mm-hmm. I've started so many conversations which have led to opportunities. And I, I'm really passionate about helping small businesses start more conversations and start them in a way that will lead to the opportunities. For, for example, I, I met and spoke to someone called Jack, um, gosh, before Christmas. Um, he asked me to write a, a little blog for him. I did that, and now I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah. And no, no one knows where that, where this conversation might go in future, but it won't go anywhere if we never started the conversation. Sure. As, a, as a result, you and I are now connected. Absolutely. It's, just, it's, it's amazingly powerful. Amazingly powerful. Yeah. So when when you're talking when you're talking like networking, then are we talking breakfast networking, business networking, or are we just talking just literally just networking with with people? My my speciality and where I cut my teeth is is definitely with breakfast networking. Um, I've I've been a member of Four Networking for over eight years now. I was a member of BNI before that. Um, so that's that's what I talk about the most. Um, but like I say. I'm also at home talking to university students and helping them build their network for the sake of, say, their corporate career. Yeah. Um, so, so networking can be broken down into lots of things. There's the networking events, such as breakfast networking, which which you've mentioned. Plus, there is just networking generally. Yeah. And actually, actually, I think we we almost overblow it, so people get scared of it. But it, it is just talking to other people. That's that's all it is. And maybe just having a bit more of a structure to that than, than just the chat. But it is ultimately just talking to other people. Fabulous, fabulous. So what I've actually got is is a handful of different questions that hopefully you can shed some light on to some of the SME Business Academy community. Um, Go ahead. So I suppose the first one really is what's your motivation? So what 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 motivated you to, to want to really help people to, to be amazing networkers? I think my motivation for starting a business isn't, isn't what people expect. Um, I, I had a sort of life-changing um, time back in 2007, um, and someone asked me one of those questions a, a long time ago, who was your biggest motivation? Who, who motivated you the most? Yeah. Um, and my answer always has been, um, my, my two biggest motivators were, um, the two guys from Lloyd's TSB Bank who turned up on my doorstep one day um, and quite wanted to have my house back on me to pay my mortgage. That's that's how the motivation started. It came yeah. out of desperation. Um, 
once I got the business going, I I realised after a while that I could help people get their words in the right order so that they were likely to sell more. So that if they were in a networking event, people were, were more likely to, to want to buy from them. And I, I suddenly realised that this was something that I could do. And, and also, I, I seemed to be able to explain quite big concepts in a very small way that people could understand. Yeah. And, and so my motivation now is that if someone pays me for, for, for help with networking, I really want to hear back from them that they've, you know, the, the income from that is 10 times more or 100 times more or whatever it is. So that's my real motivation now. If I can see my clients, one of my clients got in touch with me by Facebook message last night about 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, and and his, his question was, now, did I know about time management? Because he's so busy with new clients, <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. still working at 10 to 10 at night. Yeah. So was I. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my motivation. If so many people go to networking and, and don't make sales. I yeah. wish that wasn't the case, but it is. Yeah. And if I can help people who are going to networking events, particularly small businesses, if I can get them actually selling more and never being in the position that I was in back in 2007, yeah. where I didn't have enough money to pay the mortgage, if I can help people get through that and then actually start making a decent living, that makes me happy makes you yeah, yeah so so that's what keeps on motivating you now then as well yeah yeah fantastic yeah, yeah. It, 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 hearing back from clients that something good has happened as a result of acting on the advice that i gave to them yeah so so you said that the the, the lloyd's guy was one of the motivations what, what was one of the others um i think i've i also spent eight years working really closely um with a guy called brad burton yeah. um who's the owner and founder of, of four networking i think brad's um, brutal honesty because um, I started working with Brad around the same time when, when I didn't have a, a, a didn't have any money at all um, and Brad's Brad's book is called Get Off Your Ass um, it's, it's up here somewhere on, yeah. on, my, on my bookshelf um, and that's that's his approach to stuff as well um, and Brad's brutal honesty with me over the years I worked with him um, certainly helped me to see things in a different light um, and that's yeah so Brad's been a big motivation in, in my life and my career over the last eight years that's amazing that's amazing um, and I mean I put down here what made you see the light but I suppose you've kind of answered that already with with them two <laughs> motivators that's driving you there <laughs> when, when you're in a very deep dark hole and you can see a pinprick of light at the top yeah that was what I had to aim for and that's yeah. it's, it's not it's not a sort of try answer that, you know, I, I was hugely inspired by Richard Branson or someone. I, I had run out of money in a rather spectacular way and just, and just had to use networking because that was what I seemed to be good at to start to dig myself out of that and then found out that actually I could help other people do the same. Yeah, totally. So, so why, why do you feel that you, you got yourself in a situation then where money had got that tight that that Lloyd's wanted to come and repossess. What 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 do you think's the kind of root cause of that? The the best that I can come up with, I think, is that there was a sort of glass ceiling there. That I, I had a um I've got a history of, of getting so far in a certain career. Yeah. I, I was an estate agent for twenty years, for example. Um getting so far in a certain career and then for some reason I would make a decision that would bring that crashing down. Okay, yeah. And whether I was doing that on purpose or whether there was some, I think there was something subconscious where I, I actually did become quite successful in, in my field, estate agency. And then I think I got scared of that success. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually did something, did something quite spectacular, um, which left me properly in a hole. Um, but, but if I look back at it now, the really bizarre thing was that that somewhere along the way, putting myself in that hole was was actually more attractive than carry on going up. It's what it's what you needed to springboard you. Yeah, I guess so. Yes, I think so. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things that I wouldn't I wouldn't wish that experience on my worst enemy. And yet, if I hadn't been through it, I would never have been asked to write the book. Etc. Et yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's you, not me. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, it's because everything, every, do, do you know what, I, I use everything Apple, so they've got like the MacBook and the phone, and the problem is, once one starts ringing, it rings on everything. <laughs> right, so, so, so as a result, um, 
I, what, what I've done is I've got everything else on airplane mode in the house for the time being because yeah. um, I've, I've done far too many of these where I've been distracted by something else going on. Um, all right. So apart from my phone, which is, is, is down <laughs> here and I'm getting the occasional message, um, everything else is, is on airplane mode. For the time. Yeah, That's a good I feel, tip. I feel your pain. <laughs> That's a good tip. So That's a good tip. Is, <laughs> the other thing is with that ring, um, I was on a train the other day and the, the Apple ring went off, and literally everyone in the train carriage was, is, well, is it me? <laughs> is it me? Yeah, looking Hello. in the pockets, yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, good stuff. So, so what, um, how, what, do you, what do you do now then to make sure you get things to happen? What's the kind of schedule or the, the, the discipline that you put on yourself to make sure you get things doing and, and, and making things happen? I... I, I guess I put deadlines. I've got. Um, I, I keep a, a, a constant to-do list on on um, on this and on all my other devices all the time. Um, when I was asked to write the book, um, I had to write the book in four months. Okay. And the book is just over a hundred thousand words. Um, so I got into a discipline of writing a thousand words a day. Okay. And if I had a bad day, if I had a bad day and didn't write any words, I had to get up and do two thousand words the next day. And if I dipped a whole week, it was seven thousand words. We was the the structure was that rigid because I had a contract to do it. And I I think if I'm honest, I think that was the first time when I really realised how much I needed not just. Uh, to manage myself weekly, to manage myself daily, but to almost manage myself hourly yeah. to make sure I was doing the stuff that I needed. Nowadays, I've got over the place on on Evernote and on Trello, which I use all the time. Um, I've got lists of, of what I want to achieve and also the tiny little steps that will get me there. It's a really good question because I I get overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, overwhelm is, is a big part of, of, of who I am. What needs to to of that overwhelm is to break stuff down into tiny, tiny little steps. Yeah. So in order to take a a project for today, there are three people I need to talk to. There's a bit of writing I need to do, and and that will mean that as far as that project's concerned, today is successful. It's successful. I need to do. And then, lots, and, and so it's, for, for me, I know this is um, age-old advice, but it really is making breaking big things down into tiny little chunks totally, yeah. that I can do. Otherwise, I get overwhelmed. Brilliant, brilliant. That's a fantastic response. Fantastic answer. And a great way to do lots of tasks into 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 the chunking process and, and making sure it works. How do you handle defeat? Yeah, um, I think much better than I used to. <laughs> I, I guess I'm. These days, I yeah, I genuinely don't, I genuinely don't see defeats. Actually, um, I've had projects that haven't worked. Yeah, but, but that's that really isn't defeat to me anymore. Um, I think other things have happened in my life. I've I've had I've had people around me who were younger than me that aren't with us anymore, and that's anything else that happens which which is better than that on a day is you know i'm doing better than, than those poor people so it's yeah i don't see defeat in a business sense anymore i think i used to okay i think i used to be really thin-skinned and take everything very personally and you know why is this happening to me um I, but i wrote this down i wrote this down for someone else last week um, I wrote this down for someone else, and and, and that was, you know, you, you've got what you've got. Stop bitching about it, because uh, actually, uh, a lot of what happens in the world doesn't care about you personally, and the world's going to keep turning. Yeah. Um, so there's no point to me bitching about defeat. It's just, can I learn from that? Learn from it. Yeah. What do you, you know? What what will I do better next time? Yeah. Um, am I still above ground? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I think. Once again, that's um, that's a question that, that actually challenged me a bit because I think I used to take defeat really personally, really personal, um, yeah. and think that the whole of the world was in competition with me and somehow that I was losing. Yeah. Um, but actually, it, 
uh, it took me far too long to work out that it don't work like that. Yeah. Um, and the only person I'm in competition with is me. So there's there's no real defeat. There's no real defeat. Yeah. It's just a learning process. Yeah. 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 These. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These scars are from when the world tried to defeat me and it lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think. But I think in business, if you're, no one has that smooth upward path in business. I just don't. I, I honestly don't believe that happens. Yeah. And if it has happened to someone, then then fair play to them. I'm really happy for them. I think most people have the much more sort of spiky. Yeah, yeah. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Some days you're ahead, some days you're slipping back. But I, I, I tell you what, I do do though. I've got so many um, measures now in place in terms of personal income goals per week, personal goals in terms of other stuff, personal sales goals per week, all of that, because I think I, that, that's the other thing. When I, when I work with, with my clients, I'm really very keen to, to make sure that they celebrate the little successes yeah. because that's what I didn't used to do. And then you see a big 